Hey, Joe Latender here. Now in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about that pesky pain in the butt flange on the tub that never seems to work out for anyone, right? I mean, I'm sure you're in a situation where your tub flange is probably becoming a pain in the butt for you. It either sticks out too far or it's in way too deep, right? One side might stick out farther than the other. It has curves in it. It's just, there's a lot of things about flanges that can be a pain in the butt. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to work with that tub flange for installing cement board and getting it prepped ready for tile. Also talk to you about a couple of tips here that you can do when you're installing tile. Okay, so I get asked a lot, how do I end the cement board to a tub flange? And I'll show you right here. So I went on top of the tub flange that sticks out from the wall here. So I have a little gap there. It's about an eighth of an inch. So now it's above that. If I stuck it over this, then the cement board would come out. And we don't want that. So then I just take cement board tape and I cover the porcelain part of the tub or fiberglass, whatever it is, and press that tape down to cement board tape. And now I'm going to fill this, or not fill it, first I'm going to just paint some hydroman on it. And then I will fill it after that with thin set to make the wall flat all the way down. But I put the hydroman on first so that we have something to bond to. So hydroman will stick a little easier or better than thin set. And then the thin set will stick to the hydroban and it'll act as a crack isolator there. So I'm not getting too nuts here and I and um I just am gonna fill it in and then just to give it I'm not trying to fill the whole joint there. I'm just trying to fill to cover it to give it a nice coat and have that tape there and then I'm going to fill the rest of that with inset. All right, so Hydroban is a waterproof membrane. That's what we're putting on here. It's a waterproof membrane that I'm going to use on this cement board and it's it's a specialty item. It's not something that you're gonna find at one of the big box stores. You can order it on Amazon. It's what I like to use. It's what a lot of tile setters like to use. And I'll leave a link below so that you can click on it and go check it out. I highly recommend it. It's a great product. But I also wanna to talk to you about RedGuard. Now you could go to Home Depot or wherever else and buy some RedGuard. Lois has their own brands. I mean, as long as you have a waterproof membrane there, what, what's happening there is the the membrane is getting a bite okay to the tub it's sticking to the tub and then the thin set is getting its bite from the membrane that it's going to stick to because thin set doesn't like to stick to porcelain very well doesn't like to stick to plastic very well it'll bond a little bit but it, it could easily break away crack peel away and so I like to take this step because it helps with me knowing that it's gonna be waterproof there. We're never gonna have any issues. And I'm not gonna ever have any cracking or crack grout joints, whatever. It's just an extra safety precaution that I like to take. So again, you can use Red Guard or whatever else. I also wanna to talk to you about if you have Curdy Board. A Curdy Board is a product that Schluter makes, okay? It's a really nice product. I love using this stuff. There's some things that I don't like about it, like you can get buildup in the corners and stuff when you use the Curdy Band, which I'm gonna show you right here. So if you're using Schluter Curdy Board or you're using a Hydra Band board or some other, there's so many other, so many brands out there now. Everybody's kind of getting into this market where they're trying to come up with their own things to replace cement board. And honestly, Curdy Board's a great product. Some of those other products are good products too. I really like how sound absorbing it is, how easy it is to handle this stuff, to cut it. I guarantee you, you're never gonna have a tile that cracks with this stuff. So if you live in cold climates, I suggest that you at least use this on your exterior walls. I mean, this stuff is amazing, okay? Um, well, well worth the price. Okay, now this is called Curdy Band. 
Now, curdy band is something that you use like in the corners or where you cover the screw holes. This is the band that covers the joints of the um, curdy board, okay? Now, you could use this on the bottom of that tub, just like I did with the tape, okay? And to adhere it to that, you can buy something called curdy fix. Okay, now this stuff is a sealant. This is excellent, guys and gals. I use this for more than just tile installations. This is like my go-to for any kind of sealants that I need. It comes in gray, also comes in white. Um, any kind of sealant that you need a sealant for, like for the camper, house, around the house, anywhere, this stuff is worth the money. Go ahead and grab some of this. I know you won't regret it. But you would just squirt a bead of this along that tub flange and then you'd put that curdy band right over it, like I'm showing you with the tape. And then you would also thin set on the cement board then. So it's gonna be a two-step process there, maybe a little bit more work, but that's how I would do it. I'd run this on to the, the, the tub flange, and then I would thin set the wall and then put my curdy band over the top of it. Anyway, let's get back to this video so I can show you some more things that we're doing here. So here, let's watch. Now this is a porcelain tub, so it cleans off real easy. Now I could tape the bottom here before I do this, so it's less messy, but what I'm gonna do is just wipe that with a sponge. And then this will get taped all the way up the corner there. I'm just doing this real quick just to show you. I'm actually gonna finish doing some more taping and do the joints here. Okay, so that's basically what you're going to do, and then you're going to let this dry. I would let it dry for sure, so, you know, for a few hours, and then you'll thin set over the top of that. Okay, so you can see what I did is I used the fan and I dried this. You can see how it turned to an all green color now. And then I wiped away all the stuff I got on the tub with a sponge before it dried. Then also one other thing here is you can see I taped this joint that was here earlier in, and I just filled from sheetrock to cement board with sheetrock joint compound. My tile is going to end in here somewhere and so then this can get um, finished off nicely. We'll do more coats on this but then from wherever the tile would cover now you're going to waterproof that with um, hydroband is what I use. But anyway, let's get back to this. So, there was some unevenness in there, so uh, a gap between the pan and the, sh and the cement board. So I filled that with the tape, but I put the hydroband on there so I'd get some more stick. Now we'll just come through and we'll fill that in with some thin set so that it's nice and solid then for a tile to go on. So basically that's all I'm gonna do from here all the way around. Now sometimes these lips on these tubs stick out a little bit more. You can see right here maybe. So what I need to do is I need to fill that out so that my tile will fit flush with there. Now another thing that we can do too, you want to make sure that you start from there and bring it up. You might need to blend it up here more so a whole section to get it nice and flat but you can also grind the back of the tile a little bit in that area and I'll show you more on that in another video. Okay so I just finished all of it and you can see Filled in all that. I didn't hit that spot because it's pretty small, but I'll get that tomorrow. So it's pretty simple to do that. Since we're talking about the tub, let's talk about corner beads and things like this because you might need to do some adjusting to your tub and I'm going to talk a little more at the end of this video about this where maybe you need to put a new corner bead on. Now what you want to do is you want to put the corner bead on, finish it with sheetrock joint compound on both sides. Now I do this because if the tile finishes before the corner you want to have that nice sheetrock joint compound to finish off of with like paint okay now anything that lands underneath the tile I just use a membrane 
the waterproof membrane that I showed you, whether it be Hydroban or Red Guard or whatever you're using, to coat over that so that it is waterproof. Now, it, it, I also do the same thing on the other side where we meet with cement board and sheetrock where the wall will continue. Usually the back wall of any shower um, our tub surround is going to have a situation like this. Now I'm not exactly like I'm showing here where we have a window, but you will have to deal with this and just wanted to share this with you just in case you were looking for this information. You can see how it looks when it's done. Now we put a few coats on them, we'll sand it, and then after that I will paint it and then we'll waterproof it with our waterproof membrane. Okay, so what if you put a new tub in and it doesn't fit right? meaning your opening maybe is a little small or a little big. And so you, do you adjust it evenly on both sides and then try to work with that? Or do you push it from one side to the other? Well, I'm gonna just tell you right now to cause yourself less pain, I would move it away from the wet wall and build the wet wall out. Most of the time in a tub surround, a wet wall ends, right? At a corner and then there's the bathroom, right? Where the back wall of that tub surround, the one behind you when you're taking your shower opposite of the wet wall, continues on throughout the bathroom, right? Well, you don't want to have to shim that out and then it wrecks everything else and causes you more work on that entire back wall where you can just either add more cement board, like maybe another layer to the wet wall. Now, most of the time, all of your plumbing is going to be able to be adjustable. When you have the walls open, you're going to see that like your valves and stuff are able to be unscrewed and moved to the position that you want them to be in. So that's what I would do. I would shim out that wet wall. And then that's kind of why I showed you that corner bead, because once you do that, then you're going to have to rip off that corner bead, right? You're going to have to replace the corner bead on that corner. So just wanted to give you some tips in this video to share with you how to be able to replace that corner bead. So again, what I would do is I would shim out the wet wall. That's the answer for most of the time. I've seen other videos where they don't do it that way. They put in second layers of sheep uh, cement board all throughout the the entire thing I just think that that's causing more work than what you need to do anyway I, I have a lot more videos that I'm that I have right now on my channel for tile installation go and check those out I'm also going to be bringing out a lot more here in the near future I'm Joe Latender I really appreciate you watching Hey, if you could hit that like button for me, I'd really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button if you want to come and be a part of my channel and see more of my videos. And to be notified when I put those new videos out, hit that bell and I'll, that'll notify you and we'll let you know when we have another video coming out. Again, I'm Joe Latender. God bless you. Thanks for watching.